What's going on, gang? I hope this message finds everybody well. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about me. I'm going to talk about my journey and what's been happening and me heading into my first Ironman, which is in three weeks' time. Over the last month, we've completed the Chaser Sun, which was a 322k bike ride across from Newcastle all the way up to Air Scotland. And last weekend, I completed my first half Ironman simulation, 70.3. Big thing, the two key things that I learned... Um, about the, I'll talk about the Ironman first because we did it with the Chaser Sun. I'll talk about how, why that's relevant afterwards. The, the, the 70.3, the half Ironman, those who don't know, is a um, 1.9 swim, K swim. It is a 90K bike into a 21K run. Now, being very real about you, is I didn't do Ironman Stafford because I didn't want to pay 500 quid to go run around Stafford. I'd much rather pay that on my <laughs> for a holiday with the missus. Uh, and obviously funnel it into me paying for the stuff for the Ironman. To be honest, the biggest nemesis that obviously with my body shape and goes who know me is is my swim. I am a, I, I can I'm happy to swim that long, but I want to swim faster. And swimming faster, the, the phrase that my everyone knows my one of my favourite phrases is slow is smooth, but smooth is fast. I use that with swimming because I don't get, if I start going quick, I, start, I lose my form. I lose my form. My ass goes down and I start hyperventilating and I look like a dying seal. It's useless. So I got, um, I came in at 50 minutes. Uh, it's a little bit more than 1.9. Yeah. Can I do more? I was working on technique a little bit too. I hope on the on game day I will do. It's getting better, but, but better over the week. But I didn't feel too bad doing that. It's more of a brain game. We then got on the bike. We did ninety k. The weather was horrendous. The UK is not the not the one when it wants to be. Uh, headwinds and I've obviously I've got my my I've got carbon wheels, so they've got like a thick carbon um structure on the wheel it was like a kite so every time the wind came my bike was trying to fly off of me um and i'm not those you know a couple of videos ago i fell off my tt and smashed my face those on this video i ran into fishing line this weekend uh, running down the canal doing some running this morning i've skinned my whole ear so i'm not the most lucky dude um and it was okay tt bikes are different they they you're in a more aggressive position, meaning you use more glutes and hamstrings. My fucking legs were blowing out their ass. Like my ass and my hammies were killing me. Um, but fueling strategies was probably the biggest thing that I learned on that because I got off the bike, got into the run, felt quite good, to be honest. Um, we started running in 4K and I, both my quads seized up like rock hard. It's because I, ha I didn't, when you're gearing up for something like this, you need to make sure the day before that you're extremely hydrated. I didn't really do that. I started hydrating in the morning of just because we were moving um, and we were coming back to our house after our kitchen was being done. <sighs> My bad. Um, I literally chopped 2,000 milligram of sodium and 90 grams of carbohydrate and lo and behold, my legs started to work again. Um, I'm not going to lie, it was brutal. <laughs> uh, we, we, we got in... Um, I can't remember the sub two hours. It was it was like one forty something for the. We completed the whole Ironman in five hours fifty four. Um, the the big takeaways were fueling, and also the fear that suddenly I'm gonna double what I just did. That was probably the hardest thing for me to sort of regulate and understand. But on the flip of it, when you're doing it, the, the one, number one thing for you to do is how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. I focused on the next one. I focus on the next thing. I focused on when I'm swimming, I literally just focus on my, my thumbs stroking my pockets because it means I've got my technique in the right place. And it just is one of those things where you're doing something that you're not accustomed to. You, if you zoom out and you focus on the big task at hand, you're going to shit yourself. Whereas if you just focus on the next thing, the next bit I, on the run, I'm focusing on right call. Cool. I had a gel at one hour 30. I need another one at two hours. I, if, I need a sodium, I need a uh, whatever, a cliff bar. I, and I periodize my races like that. So it cuts it into chunks and it makes it 30 small races, not one fucking massive one. Yeah. The, the chase of sun um, was, as I mentioned, uh, we, we rode from Newcastle all the way over to Air Scotland, 322k. That was an emotional game. That was the one of the, that, the the main thing that I've learned through endurance is the games that your brain plays. One of my favorite clients, Petra Gullard, always told me that I, endurance racing is nothing to do with your body. It's all to do with your mind. And I didn't really believe him at first until you get into it. And then you realize that it's a fucking brain game. Me and Brad set off at three in the morning, got down to the race. Nobody was there. We were the first ones there. So we were an hour early. 
we started uh, and I had no caffeine, which sounds really stupid, but at that time in the morning, everything's asleep apart from me and I was just not on it. We did three hours and we were the most grumpy bunch of motherfuckers out there, not talking, trying desperately hard just to get on with it. Stopped at the first stop, chowed some coffee and it was like uh, seeing Moses. Matthew Clark turned up, we went by his house energy changed we it's funny what you do when something that's really important is, is that human connection piece that piece of, of 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 belonging you just when you see one of your mates your close mates you just fucking absolutely we just turn it up suddenly we're fine traveling at 30 okay an hour happy joking fucking around pushing um and it, that's again how i sort of could cut it up i've got caffeine in so happy to know i got loads of coffee so i was fine didn't shit myself either which was great um and I mean, it took fucking ages. I mean, it took 12 hours, um, I think 12 hours, 24 off the top of my head. Um, and that was savage. Not gonna lie, my ass was killing me. But on the flip of it, the the, the, the sort of the learning of it was is, is the same. And the ele- elephant analogy, I cut it up to each each feed stop. I made sure that I was hydrated. Having the girls come and meet us and, and just having a laugh. The funny thing, what joy will do to you when you're in a compromised situation is how can you turn it on its head and make it funny or, or have a joke will massively lift morale. And it was a huge thing for people to know if they, if they said, I'm massive into leadership and if you can make jokes of a bad situation, it makes it a whole lot better because you're just going through the fucking hurt locker. And that's something for me to take into the Ironman. I'm, I'm running into this as hard as I possibly can, physically and emotionally. Um, do I feel ready? I, I'll do it fucking now. But that's because I'm a stubborn bastard who just goes, I'll do it. I want to go in. I'm not being competitive against other people. We met a guy, uh, Rach, if you guys don't know, my wife. She could be in her first sprint triathlon. And we met one of her friends who is who runs Worlds Ironman. Dude is a fucking freak. He was 300 meters ahead in the swim. He competed a half Ironman in four hours. Like, he was fucking absolutely... Pff, looks like it, though. He's skinny and, and he's got he's got a coat hanger on his back. His, his back's so big. My point is, I'm not competing against him. This is, again, many will know that but my challenges are an exploratory exercise now. I'm not measuring my ego against somebody else. I want to be competitive for myself. I want to feel like I've banged it. I want to feel like I've put it all in and laid it on the table and not just, excuse me, survive. Because what's the fucking point? This sort of thing. So yeah, those are my two key takeaways. And if you are about to compete in a big event and a big event doesn't need to be a half Ironman it could be your first triathlon it could be your open water swim it could be your first 10k 5k whatever it wants to be to start with just remember for you to break it up you just keep looking at that finish line you're going to struggle break it up into chunks keep reminding yourself being aware that self-talk is massive because emotionally what you're going to be doing is you're going to be closing things down saying I'm going to quit I'm going to quit I'm going to quit Self-talk helps talk to that negative voice in your head and be like, actually, do you know what? That's just an emotion. Your body's trying to, to stop you from doing it because it's uncomfortable. It, it, it's finding this impossible. If you can change finding this impossible to this is uncomfortable, you've developed a choice in your head. And that choice is whether to complete or to quit. And you'll naturally lean against complete because you've just gone fucking all in. That's my number one golden ticket. So that's what I've done over the, 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 the Iron Man sequences that we did on the weekend. Chase the sun. Maybe the next video you might see of me, I may have finished the Ironman. The Ironman's in three weeks, so we will see. Um, very much locked and loaded. Last bit of training, we've got um, training's tapering next week, after next week. So I've got big volume this week, 14 hours this week. I've got 12 hours the week after, eight hours last week, eight hours race. Done. Anyway, I hope the message finds everybody well. I'll catch you guys soon. And any comments, DMs, or if you have any questions, drop in the comments below. Send me them on Instagram, at Will Foden, and we'll catch you soon.